So uh, here is the um, biharmonicity. Here is the biharmonicity. Uh, as you can see it on hexagons, if you remember last time, what we showed was in the case AN, the, the ribbon, remember the ribbon was a Cartesian product between a weight and an element of uh, uh, the graph, uh, of the graph that we're working with, the Dunkin diagram, the higher Dunkin diagram, yes? In the case where the Dunkin diagram is AN, then what we do is, uh, the first, the weight tells you where to put the center of the mirrors, the center is here, right here in the middle. And then we take an element of the AN graph, which is uh, something in the a point in the um, principal vial chamber, which is not on the mirrors. And we mirror it. So you can see here those points which are mirrored. You see a blue one, a red one, and a purple one. Yes? So um, the, uh, what appears actually on the ribbon are some plus one and minus ones, plus one down and uh, then alternating signs. So you see here, this is, um, here we keep in the same point of the weights, but we vary, we take the sum of neighbors on the graph AN. Do you see here, there would be the graph AN, it's not pictured, yes? And you see, we take a look at my arrow here, we take the three neighbors of this, of this arrow on the graph AN. So this means that we take three hexes which have the same center. And now, what you can see is that they give you exactly the same, as three identical hexes. Do you see the orange, the light blue, and the dark blue one? The thin ones, which are, uh, which are uh, just translated. Yes? So can you see once again, uh, these are three hexes which have uh, the same center, yes? Which means that they're the left side of the ribbon, which is a position, gives you the position of the mirrors, is the same, yes? The mirrors are centered right here. And you have three neighbors on the graph G, which is AN here, yes? So the neighbors are the neighbors of uh, my uh, cursor here. And then you, uh, let me uh, try to do here a graphics trick. You can uh, bring the ones, uh, you see this way you get three hexes which are identical in shape. That means they, they come from the same uh, point of the graph AN, but they are centered in three different places, yes? So the, center does, uh, the centers are around my cursor. One center is here, here, here. Yes, and they give you, they give you exactly the same thing. So this was just... Uh, uh, this was just a translation. Now, if you do the denominators of uh, of uh, the uh, power series that we did, you find the uh, sum of four hexes, which are which sum is trivial, with the same axis, as you can see. I think I have drawn this one before. This is one of them. The second one here the third one in yellow and in yellow here and the fourth one. Yes, so the sum of these, of, of the blue and the yellow is the same as the sum of this and this. Yes. As you can see, these points here, these two points cancel.
and uh, so so there are some identities satisfied by these hexes and uh, uh, now um, one thing that I would like to uh, uh, show so before we we make the matrices is a way in which uh, the matrices are done in the case uh, in the usual case ah so here we have some uh, matrices uh, So if you take a course of uh, linear algebra, or at least if you take a course of linear algebra with me, then you will do the, uh, the matrix elements as arrows on the diagonal. Can you see? The red arrow is this element, let's say E14, yes? The red arrow is the HIJ. Can you see? And uh, the product of matrices then is matching, uh, so you have here an element of the red matrix and an element of the blue matrix, a matrix element, yes? So this would be, let's say, E1, uh, 4, and this would be E4, 6, yes? So E1, 4 times C4, 6 is equal to E1, 6, yes? So the composition of uh, the product of matrices is done by, uh, uh, by uh, putting uh, the arrows head to tail, yes? And now if the arrows had multiplicity, let's say an integer multiplicity, this one, the red one appeared twice, so you had two red arrows here and three blue arrows here, then the product would have each arrow with every other, with every arrow. So every red arrow with every blue arrow, yes? So you get a coefficient of two times three, which is six for the black arrow. Yes? Uh, any, any questions about this? Uh, about this? this one, was at some point at least it was interactive. So mathematical changes things from time to time, but uh, okay. So this is uh, so this is how you uh, how you make uh, a diagonal into matrices. Yes, and the product of matrices is again the composition of arrows on the diagonal. Um, now, if we go further. This is the way things are done on the ribbon. As you can see, this is, uh, this, this is an HIJ on the ribbon. This is a part that we discussed last time. So what you have are some mirrors. You see here the, uh, the orange mirrors, yes? And you can also see the graph AN, yes? Uh, you also see here, actually, the matrix, the matrix itself, yes, in gray, in light gray. Yes, so this is a matrix on which we work. And as you can see, there's a graph AN here. And from the graph AN, uh, we use every other vertex, do you see, for the matrix. Yes, that's because the... Uh, the um, diagonal is using only is using roots of SL2, while the mirrors are on weights of SL2, half integers. Actually, in this case, uh, very nicely, the uh, the the length here is a correct one for the length of a root. This is a square root of two, as you can see. And the weight is square root of 2 over 2. Yes, which are exactly the correct uh, length in, uh, in uh, Lie uh, groups. Yes? Now, any questions about this? So if we, move the, if we move this point on the ribbon, we get all the matrix elements. Yes? And uh, now, uh, what about the... Uh, 
something like the symplectic case. The symplectic case is very important in mechanics, and uh, so these are the series B, C, D. Uh, this part is again new. Uh, entirely, I, I have discussed with many people uh, in the presentation theory, and they didn't seem to. Uh, the, the usual basis for the BCDs are, uh, are different from this one. Now, what you have here, as you can see, the matrix is twice bigger, but you have all of a sudden another mirror. Can you see in the middle of the graph AN? Remember that the, the BCDs are obtained by folding the graph AN in various ways. You can fold the graph AN at the le after you build the roots. Yes, then you project on the, on the uh, plane of symmetry. And the roots which are in the plane of symmetry remain long and the others, which are perpendicular and they're projected, become shorter, right? And there's the other way in which you think of uh, some ob mathematical objects uh, like vector spaces at the vertices of the graph AN. And in that case, when you have an orbit, a usual orbit, you get just one of them. And when you have uh, something like Z mode 2 or Z mode 3 acting on the middle one, it breaks it into eigenspaces. Yes, that's how dn appears. Now, let's take a look. This should be uh, something like either of the, uh, of the BCDs up to this point. Do you see what appears in the middle of the room all of a sudden is a new mirror, the magenta mirror, which has the property that it preserves a sign. Do you see the blue here is reflected into blue, yes? And the red into red. Yes, this mirror appears also in the middle of the graph AN, right? So this is a symmetry with respect to Z mode two. And look what happens here. Uh, we get, of course, because of this new mirror, we get, two ti we get twice more um, twice more points, yes, on the diagonal. We get twice more uh, signs. Remember, red is plus one and blue is negative one, yes? So because of this, because we want our roots to have still length root two, most of them, uh, we have the period, yes? So as you can see, the period is uh, this one with thick lines. It's half the usual one. Now, this is exactly how you uh, learn about uh, uh, orthogonal or symplectic matrices and so on. They are not built out of, uh, uh, they're certainly never built out of the Duncan diagram or anything like this. They are presented as usual matrices, maybe twice bigger with a subject to some symmetry. Yes, there's a matrix J there, which is just here the off-diagonal uh, identity. But look what happens. So now the period is half of the previous period. And you can have, as you can see here, you can have, uh, here you have two points. So uh, let's take, for instance, a symplectic case. The red would be a PI, a QI, and uh, the blue would be a, 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 a so the reds are, are Qs and the, the blues are, are Ps, let's say. Yes? So here you have an element, uh, uh, I mean a matrix element made of, a, so your product PIQJ, as you can see. And uh, look what happens now. Here you have a, a uh, a PIPJ, do you see now you have two blues in the same, uh, in the same period, yes? And now you need to see what happens uh, when, uh, the, uh, when these points enter the sign preserving mirror. Now, of course, if they would enter the other mirror, do you see like here, 
that would be singular and you would get zero because the other mirror changes uh, the sign. But here, this mirror, the magenta mirror does not change the sign. So now there are two possibilities. One, as you can see here, is that uh, the PI and PJ which enter, uh, the PI and PJ which enter, give you a PI square. Yes? So before you had something like uh, a, uh, a plus one and a plus one. So this has, uh, well, in this case, let's, let's take it just like there. That's minus one, minus one. So this would be a QI, QJ, uh, PI, PJ. This would be on I and this would be on J, P, I, P, J. And the length of this is uh, square root of two. Now when they come together, we get a negative two in the middle and the rest zeros. And this has length uh, two, which is uh, root two times root two. So this is bigger. And uh, uh, this would correspond to pi, to a p uh, k square, yes? And if you were to see, so let me remind you the graph. Uh, the graph, uh, so this is symplectic. The graph is uh, a, a CN, and uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the CN is a quotient of the AN. So this is the AN located like this. So this is a graph AN. And we project, project on the plane of symmetry. Project roots. And if we project these roots, we're going to get one here and uh, the other ones. And in uh, graphical terms, this is this way because these two are orthogonal on each other. These two are orthogonal on each other. So when you project two orthogonal vectors on the plane of symmetry, you get something. Uh, so if this is root two, this one is uh, so here we have to normalize them different, but this is one over root two times the original L. Yes. While the, uh, uh, the, edge, the roots which are in the plane of symmetry remain of the, with the same length. Yes. So you have a long one. Now, uh, the interesting thing, I think, which is useful for, for the further uh, computations is uh, what happened, I mean, how would you guess if somebody would give you this graph, just this graph, how would you guess all the amazing properties of the symplectic group? This, uh, you won't find this uh, for some reason in the literature, I mean, going backwards from the diagram to, for us, it's of course very important because we, have to do the same in the higher case. And the, uh, an answer, at least the beginning of it, is that you can see that there is one long root. Yes, so this has longer roots here when they meet. And this means uh, that uh, this should be something like a P square, yes? So this is a theory which has squares, so it's uh, commutative. The PIs and QJs, uh, 
Uh, and the, uh, the, the, so you have polynomials in PI and QJs, yes? And the non-commutativity would appear, the anti-symmetry would appear at the level of the, then of the inner product, which is in this case uh, the uh, uh, Poisson bracket. So, so uh, in the orthogonal case, uh, when uh, the picture would be exactly the same, but when two points enter the mirror, then, so this is the uh, symplectic. In the orthogonal case, if you enter the middle mirror, so in the middle mirror you have a one. Now, it means that the length, the length is one, which is root two over root two. So in the orthogonal case uh, Bn, uh, you will have a, uh, a root here which is shorter, yes? Now the orthogonal case, by the way, the Bn comes out of the D, so this is a D, and you project onto, uh, you project the roots onto the plane of symmetry. And then these two ones, which are orthogonal on each other, will be shorter. Yes? And then again, you can see that you don't have polynomials there. And working uh, a little bit more, you can find that uh, the product is actually the usual inner product, the sesquilinear inner product, which is symmetric, except for some constants. So, so, uh, so you'll find that the, the, here the product is anti-symmetric. Remember, these are, this is an orthogonal case, yes? So both of these are the orthogonal case. One of them is orthogonal odd and the other is orthogonal even. Here yeah, the sculpture that you have in the back of the class, uh, classroom is, the, uh, is a DN, which is uh, the, an orthogonal uh, uh, even, yes? It's this one. So what about DN? The most interesting case that remains is DN. So there you have a mirror. It's not pictured here. I, I didn't program it, uh, but I have computed it. So, um, so in the DN case, again, you have here a, uh, you have a two uh, sign reversing mirrors. So this is sine uh, reversing mirrors. And you have a sign preserving mirror in the middle. Sign preserving mirror. And again, you come with a uh, red and uh, blue uh, I mean, you, you come with an element of the same kind, let's say two red points. You see they would be reflected this way. And you come toward the mirror. Now here, before this, you had the length was a, a square root of two. Yes? because you have a one and one and two, and the rest are zeros in the period, yes? So this is a tricky part. How can you, what happens, so you have this mirror, what happens if you enter this sign-preserving mirror? It doesn't uh, destroy you, uh, but how do you get still length root two? Because uh, dn is uh, unimodular. So for dn, all the roots have length root two. And what, uh, what appears is that uh, uh, for the DN, you have a one in the mirror, 
the one in the mirror, whatever sign there was, which entered the mirror, but the mirror itself has a slot in the vector. So there's a slot which here is zero, and here this is plus minus one. If, so this is the mirror slot, that is entry of the vector, which is plus minus one when a point enters the, the sign preserving mirror. Now this, uh, now it's a time to be precise. First of all, the Dinkin diagram DN has two legs. Let's call them plus and minus because they come out of that action of Z mod two. Uh, the point of this is not just to do the, the BCDs here, but to do the, B, the higher BCDs as well. So it's very important to, to do this. And um, the, uh, the sign, sign of mirror is equal to the product between the sign of the position of uh, the mirror times the sign of the leg of the D diagram. So that's a sign taken by the mirror. Yes, the statement is that if you take this sign for the mirror, then the inner products will be exactly the inner products on the ribbon or the inner products of the DN. Remember, the DN are done in a completely different way, the usual way, but that's, that's one way which does not uh, generalize well at all. Are there any questions? So there is an extra slot. A slot means that you have uh, n elements, you have n plus one entries for the vector, for the high HIJ. I mean, in this case, for the HIJ, the analog of the HIJ. You have one extra uh, position. That position is zero unless you you are on one of the legs of the DN. And if you are on one, remember that, that our ribbon, ribbon was the Z mod, Z mod 2N times over Z mod 2 with this graph, yes? So you have a parity from here and you have a parity of the leg. Yes, that gives you a sign plus or minus one, and then you can check that this gives you the correct inner product between roots. Uh, so once again, this is the, uh, the amazing sign preserving mirror in the middle of the room. Yes, if you, uh, if, if you are in the symplectic case, uh, two people enter, I mean, one person and its reflection enter, and then you have a two in the mirror, an entry two in the mirror, so things in the mirror are longer, yes? And you see the graph there. You see this, this part, the right-hand side there is longer. 
because it was in the plane of symmetry. If you are in the orthogonal case, odd orthogonal case, two, two people, one person and the reflection enter the mirror, and there's only a one in the mirror. So that is shorter than the root two if you have two different ones. And finally, if you are in the DN case, there's an extra slot for the mirror. So the mirror becomes, uh, uh, becomes a person, as they say sometimes in our school of economics about, uh, about uh, incorporated entities. Uh, so it, become, uh, it becomes a, a, a person and then, uh, then that, uh, that sign is plus or minus one depending on the product of two parities. Very good. Now, any questions? So uh, here we are with the... Uh, higher matrix, so we're starting now the, the higher matrix based on what we did uh, last time again. So we are in the case, in the higher case AN. Of course, as you can imagine, we'll apply our discussion from today and go also to the higher DNs and so on. So this is a case AN. And remember that the, uh, that, yes, Sure. I'm not very sure. It Here, okay, we have, a, we have a microphone. Is it on? So, yeah, 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 keep it close. Okay. So, is it, is it, is it, is it, is it understand, is the following, following understanding correct? Your notion of higher matrix is meant to be arrangement of something, put, put something into a matrix. Does it make sense to, to talk about multiplication of higher matrix? So yes. Uh, you see, I had, uh, um, uh, there were various choices when I chose my definition for, of the higher matrix. Uh, in particular, something like the sum of HIJs. Uh, HIJs are, these are entries in your, in your higher matrix. Uh, right, but if you, uh, if you would uh, expect uh, that uh, a sum of HIJs would give you some other HIJs. So you have a linear relation between HIJs, yes? These linear relations, I showed you some, they were very special and they certainly did not allow uh, the right multiplication. So I tried to keep the whole, uh, I mean, I'm going to define the matrices now, so um, what we're going to do instead is very, uh, 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 maybe very surprising at, at first sight. So first of all, we're going to define the multiplication uh, relatively trivial, exactly like for the usual matrices. Just a moment. And then the part that will contain the whole information about the higher structure will be the replacement of the uh, star, of the involution, the, the, of the, the adjoint. The, the, the word multiplication, you mean the multiplication of two higher matrices? Yes, yes, exactly. So for that, we'll take them just as usual matrices, nothing special whatsoever. They will, as you will see. But the, uh, all the, the new part, the information, will be in the way the involution is defined. Let me, let me rephrase my, my question a little bit. Yes. So, so I assume that uh, if you are able to define a multiplication of higher matrix or addition, et cetera, then your entries must lie, uh, of higher matrix must lie in some ring. And what is this ring? Is there, is there no, ring? no, we, we'll, we'll have them right away. But once again, uh, the multiplication will be extremely simple. However, um, I have given you last time an analogy. Suppose that you give the multiplication just of functions on the real line as a set, on Z mod n, as a set. Yes, so it's just a set with n elements. You multiply uh, functions, uh, uh, complex functions on that. So there's nothing interesting, uh, nothing too interesting uh, on it whatsoever. 
However, if you also give the Fourier transform, then you have the whole group structure, you have uh, on R the differential operators, uh, you have everything, yes? So if you give this, uh, this very special operation, the, which is uh, something of order four, almost of order two, yes? The Fourier transform, that contains all the information. So that's what we're going to do here. So let me, uh, let me uh, start to define it. So here, what we have is uh, exactly um, what we're going to take is simply the period. So we take, uh, so we are in the case, case AN, case A, Yes, over any semi simple Lie algebra G. Yes, so we do mathematics uh, over. If we do it over SL3, it's uh, one higher, over SL4 is two higher, but the others should be viewed as uh, higher things with some symmetry. And now we take a period, so we are at, uh, at, the, uh, at the nth root of unity. And now we take a period period of uh, roots as we defined it last time. And uh, this would be the higher diagonal. And uh, then we take two points so we take matrix units E, I, J with I and J. So this is a period, so this is a diagonal. With I and J are in the diagonal. And uh, with the usual uh, product, just Eij times uh, Ekl is equal to Kronecker of Jk Eil. Yes, and uh, uh, we can even use the usual star, Eij star is equal to Eji. So nothing new here. Now, since uh, uh, since the the period is uh, typically it has a basis, so it's uh, some uh, uh, vector. It's a, it's a vector space. Uh, then. Uh, because of this, uh, you can view these as tensors, but that's not, uh, that's not crucial. So here we have a, a matrix. We can put these matrices R, uh, but let me, uh, so here we have a diagonal, as you can see it. It's here separated, so this is for the, here we work over SL3. Remember last time we had a period four by four. Do you remember for the diagonal? Yes? So here's a diagonal in a period four by four. You see four, four things of four. So it is a tensor. It's by the way exactly the dimension of the tensor which appears in uh, general relativity. Um, so uh, 16 by 16. Now, uh, the interesting thing is the, uh, 
the action, what we're going to have is an action of the vial group. This is important. So instead, so uh, instead, or in addition to the usual involution, we have an action of the subjacent, the underlying vial group W as follows. Uh, here we need a uh, we need an aside first. So we need a study of the definition of the permitohedron. Now uh, let's take a permitohedron in the case A3. So this is uh, in the case A2. So here we have A2 or uh, S L3 is the underlying one, and the uh, vertices of the permitohedron are labeled 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, uh, 2, 3, 1, and uh, 2, 1, 3. Here. So the adjacent ones are uh, the adjacent faces. So here you switch uh, uh, first with second. So edges correspond to uh, switch positions, switch uh, labels by position. Adjacent, so switch adjacent labels. By the way, the uh, the metrization, so the position of sigma is, uh, of let's say pi, the permutation is uh, pi inverse. So in uh, homogeneous coordinates. So you take the inverse of the permutation and those would give you three coordinates which have sum here equal to six, yes? Now, as in any group, so this one will be the action, the, so the uh, switch, so position switching, position switching will be the action, the right action, the right action of W on itself. And uh, now we also have a uh, left action. So the left action which uh, is usually taken to be the main one. Uh, well, the left action would be by uh, 
geometric reflections. So what does this transformation do? Can somebody uh, tell, tell me? Fast? Yes, yes, yes. Even faster. What exactly is the connection between a label and a permuted one? Everybody except for William, who works in these things. One, look, one, two, three into one, three, two. Yes, two, one, three with three, one, two. What exactly does it do? Hmm? It switches two and three wherever they are, yes? So this switches two and three, yes? So the left action switches, switches labels labels wherever they are. Very good. So now we're going to use both to define the involution. And uh, let me try to make a compromise here, lift a little bit the screen. Yes, we're going to lift it here. Maybe just make it a, a tad smaller. And, uh, okay. And, uh, what we're going to do is, uh, I think we still have one more blackboard. So let me try to work with that. Okay, so now what we're going to do is uh, choose, so this is uh, the crucial part of the whole higher matrices. Uh, choose now, once and for all, um, a product of uh, reflections acting on the right, acting on the left, excuse me, acting on the left, having product, uh, a product of uh, simple reflections, simple reflections. And so the having as product is product the cox, a coxet element. Remember that the product, the product of simple reflections is a coxet element, yes? So now, so these are chosen once and for all. If they are changed, they would give a very uh, simple uh, transformation of our higher matrices. Now, um, position, so translate, translate these reflections, these simple reflections, Uh, let's give them a name. I, uh, let's say the main, by definition, the main sequence of reflections.
so that they change. So this is given i, given i and j in the diagonal. So given two points in the diagonal, so that they move i onto j. Label i with uh, the identity in the vial group. And now, uh, to act with an element W in the vial group, Okay, wait, so label I with one, yes? Uh, complete, complete the permitohedron from reflections from the uh, main sequence or with, with the main sequence of reflections. To act with an element W, uh, start, um, take I prime the point labeled by W, And uh, and J prime, its image through the main sequence Then W of I J is equal to I prime J prime. The next time we'll show that this is actually a uh, that this is actually an action of the vial group. So this is a fundamental one. Now, if you want to do some unusual multiplication, you can turn your elements with, a, with an element in your vial group, then multiply, then turn back. You can have uh, commutators by multiplying in various directions. So this is a change of direction. So here, let me, uh, since we have only one minute, it's, uh, uh, I, I'm going to show you here is our higher matrix, and look what happens if we turn it. Uh, what appears is exactly the uh, that the diagonal has the uh, the structure that we talked about last time. Yes, it's exactly the roots of SL uh, of SL three, the root lattice. Yes, and notice that this here is a uh, is a permutohedron. Yes, and you go, this is your I and this is J. Yes, so this is the element I, J. Can you see? So the two reflections, the two fundamental reflections are first the red one, do you see it's around this axis, and the blue one. And now, look, you can put all the other elements. I'm going to move them to see. The, these are the six conjugate exactly like the, uh, an element and its adjoint, the six conjugates 
of uh, so the action of the wire group uh, of SL3 on it. Uh, let's just take one of them, for instance, if we start from here, do you see my cursor, yes? Then we apply first the red transformation, the original one, so we reflect here, back here, and then we apply the blue one, so we go down here, yes? So it means that from here we went down, yes? And this is exactly this element, do you see? This green element here. Yes, so you start from any point and you apply exactly the same reflections in the same order. So this gives you a, so uh, I did scour the whole internet for this uh, and uh, apparently in very many incarnations, uh, uh, higher, I mean, uh, higher categories or anything like this, this action has not appeared anywhere. So this is a crucial point. Once we have this, we can turn multiplication in various directions and so on. And this corresponds on the ribbon to, uh, to switching, turning around the point and making the multiplication in one of the other vial chambers, yes? Which of course is very, very different and has very, uh, will connection with the original one. Now, in the usual case, you replace AB for SU2 with the product on the other side. So the product, the opposite product, BA, yes? And as you know, this gives you exactly the, uh, the, the commutant, AB minus BA, yes? So this immediately uh, goes to higher commutators and so on. And is defined in the most general case. So you can define the, the AN and the, so the higher matrices can be defined over E8 or over anything. We'll be interested mostly in working over SL3 and SL4. Yes, so this is, uh, so again, the multiplication has been made uh, trivial. I mean, it has been made the usual one, but this uh, involution, uh, the, the star has been replaced by, and, uh, by, uh, by this operation. And then we'll show when we have representations that instead of two people looking at a piece of glass, which is the usual adjoint, one seeing left and the other sees right, uh, here people would look at a pyramid, at a glass pyramid, and this action will correspond to switching positions. So, this is the first time that this is presented, so uh, at all. <laughs>